Ah, Daggerfall. The long-forgotten gem of the Elder Scrolls universe. Ever wanted to step back into this massive world, but had trouble getting into it? Well, now there's a new version that I had an itty-bitty hand in making available. The newly packaged modded Daggerfall Unity on GOG. The vast majority of Elder Scrolls fans began their Tamrielic journeys when the series went a bit more mainstream, most notably with Oblivion and of course Skyrim dominating the Western fantasy RPG genre for over a decade. And when those fans get curious about the older Elder Scrolls games, they try to step back but find a janky world of old school gaming. And it's a struggle enough to disembark the ship onto my favorite land, Morrowind. The dice rolls alone put so many off, if the character animations didn't already. Even if they could excuse the gloom, it would be a grand and intoxicating innocence to expect modern gamers to excuse flaws worse than Morrowind's. However, I started with Morrowind and know that past the jank, is one of the best examples of world building and writing there is in gaming. So at some point, I wondered about the earlier 90s entries. I tried Redguard, and it's an amazing adventure game that holds up today, I'm not joking. It has some of the best voice acting in all of Elder Scrolls, and some of the worst, but at least it's funny. Well met, stranger! Somehow, even the jumping and parkour doesn't feel terrible. Now, beyond Redguard lay Daggerfall. The one that the old school gamers insist is the best Elder Scrolls game, at least at its core. But why? Up until a few years ago, playing the game could be a challenge itself. If you got it running, interacting with it felt atrocious. Many couldn't even figure out how to look down and hit that first rat. I mean, it's archaic. This game is so old it barely had proper mouse controls. And although the world was 3D, every character, enemy, and tree were 2D sprites with, if you're lucky, a few frames of animation. It's a whole other universe of jank compared to Morrowind's. But maybe, as with The Elder Scrolls 3, the bigger the rough, the bigger the diamond. And then Daggerfall Unity entered the spotlight. This was an engine replacement for Daggerfall using the Unity engine, meaning improved performance, better controls, and anyone with Unity experience could change the game however they liked, opening up modding like never before. Not too long ago, Daggerfall Unity entered beta which meant that it was feature complete. Everything from the original Daggerfall was now in the Unity version, and the modding scene began to grow. Graphics overhauls, immersion additions, and more have been created, making right now the best time ever to play Daggerfall. I made a video for 2021 showing off what was possible and it seems I did it right because people were pretty happy with what I demonstrated. And now things are even better. Today, I'm here to show you something that I assisted with. People from GOG saw my video and wondered if it was possible to make a modded version of Daggerfall that came pre-packed using Unity and mods. And the Daggerfall Unity GOG cut was planned. Loading Daggerfall Unity with choice settings and mods was the idea they had and they asked me to help choose which mods and what settings to use to create the best experience possible for newer gamers. I like to keep it vanilla friendly but also to add things where it feels empty along with lighting tweaks to get the vibes just right. And it's done, for now. What this means is you can go to GOG download Daggerfall for free and it comes ready to go with all the mods set up for you. Zero effort on your part. Just jump into the remade world the size of an actual country. Best thing is, if you don't like a specific included mod, you can just turn it off in the mod menu or change its settings. 
You can also continue modding the game if you like, as new mods are made all the time. In fact, a couple of the mods I included were very recent creations. They are super important, I promise you. Now, besides getting the game running and making it look nicer, actually getting into playing Daggerfall can be difficult. So, let me show you how to get into Daggerfall and why there has never been a better time to jump in. Playing Daggerfall for the first time can be confusing and disorientating. The mid-90s was a different time for RPGs, and Bethesda games turned away from this classic style quite sharply after Daggerfall, though some classic elements remained in Morrowind. The first thing you have to understand is that Daggerfall's world is realistically sized, as in it's the size of Great Britain, over 200,000 square kilometers, with 15,000 locations, including cities, temples, graveyards, and dungeons. Of course, also like the real world, the vast majority of the land and even most of the locations are unimportant and uninteresting, outside of the fact that their mere existence adds to the realism of the world. The main problem here is if you're trying to walk from one town to the next, you could completely miss it, just because of the sheer amount of land you have to cover. Two dots on the map might look close together, but it could be a lengthy trek to bridge that distance. Because of this, I would recommend using the fast travel system liberally. Doing that quickly and or safely can be costly, so unless time is of the essence, I'd recommend camping out and using methods that don't cost you any gold. Also remember to use the search feature to find the exact place you're looking for. The entire map is unlocked from the start, so you can just fast travel wherever you like. The only limitation is really time. And speaking of things taking time, the date is another thing you have to consider. When you first get into the world of Daggerfall, you have a couple vague situations that you're meant to investigate, but no real directions. What you'll find is that various notes and information will be delivered to you after a number of days. Fast traveling around will take multiple days, if not weeks, so if you use that you should start getting clearer instructions and messages. Be careful though, many quests, the main quest included, have time limits. You can miss an important meeting, making the main quest straight up incompletable. There are deadlines, and they do matter, so pay attention to those days. In terms of the core gameplay, I'm going to remind you that this is pre-Morrowind, so combat can be weird if you're unfamiliar. On this version of Daggerfall that I've helped set up, I've made it so that combat works like in Morrowind. You right-click to attack, and every swing does a dice roll to see if you hit the enemy. That does mean you could be attacking an enemy and just hitting air, even if visually it looks like it should be connecting. There is a weirder, more classic version of combat though, that requires you to actually swing your mouse in the direction you want to attack, left to right, up to down. If you want to use that, feel free to switch to it in the options menu. Also, when it comes to enemies, do note some of them have requirements in terms of what types of weapons will hurt them. Some require steel or other specific materials to actually hurt them. So if you're just going around with an iron dagger, there might be some creatures that you straight up cannot damage. Also, this game is an old school RPG, meaning it's hard. Character creation is one of the most important factors to your success in the world of Daggerfall. And if you don't know what makes a good or bad character, don't be surprised if the first rat or bat wipes the dungeon floor with your face. Don't be discouraged though. You can look up character creation guides if you like, or just experiment with stats until you find something that works for you. 
Besides all that, there's a million things that I could tell you about how to get started in Daggerfall. But also, it's no fun just giving you formulas or min-maxing strategies. So, to get you off on the right foot, you can now join me as I begin a new game and take you through the starting dungeon. Explaining things, sharing some thoughts, and getting to Daggerfall City. Welcome to Daggerfall Unity, and today I will be your guide in starting up not just playing Daggerfall, but getting into the world of Daggerfall. Because the first time I played Daggerfall, I was confused, and it made it very difficult to get into. But anyway, this is Daggerfall Unity. As soon as you install the game off of GOG and get the game running, uh, it should look like this. On the, these are the basic options right here that you can turn on and off if you so desire. Under the mods, you can see all the mods that I've helped compile for this install. And just as a note, some of these mods do have various uh, settings built into them. These settings have been tweaked to be optimal based on what I think would be the nicest experience, but you're free to change them as you so desire or just, you know, disable an entire mod that you don't like um, at all. There's also the advanced button right here, which has even more options uh, that you can tweak and change as you so desire. There's the ambient lighting settings right there. If you want to make things brighter, here's where you do it. Um, and you can even change the colors on, on the map and stuff like that. But this is about getting into the game, so let's press play. And when you press play, it's going to show some cinematics, which I will skip over today. You don't have to watch them all. Uh, but if you just... There's the Daggerfall logo, I mean. I'm going to click, and there we go. It's, it's skipped to here. This is where you can load a game or start a new game. Since we're starting up, let's click Start New Game. And let's create a character. Now, creating a character in Daggerfall is super, super important because you can just create an unusable character. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do min, maxi, whatever. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you some basic guy, loose, rough guides to give you an idea of how to make something somewhat workable. Anyway, since Daggerfall takes place over here in High Rock and Hammerfell, let's... Uh... Now, where you come from in this game does matter on how people react to you. So it takes place in these two regions and basically the people up here hate the people down here and the people down here hate the people up there. And also if you're like an Argonian, some people don't like you. It, there's, there's relationships with all sorts of things. Uh, on the first playthrough, it doesn't matter too much unless... Yeah, it's fine. Let's be the Red Guards. Yes. And what we're going to do is... You could generate a class by answering questions. That's always a cool experience. But today, the main thing I'm going to show you is pick a class and pick custom. Because that's going to be where this all comes in. Now, this is an old school game. We've got our stats. We've got primary skills. Class name. Um, first class. Because it's our first class, isn't it? <laughs> now... All the stat, like every stat is good, but generally what you want to do, you, you drop the ones that you don't like or, or don't feel like you require as much in general. Like let's say I'm making a general sort of fighting-ish sort of class and I'm, I'm going to drop all of these less fighting stuff and I'm going to boost up agility to like 80 because agility impacts oh, up to 75 that's the max uh, because agility is sort of a very important stat endurance is also going to be an important one strength is going to be an important one you know and let's just let's keep strength up up, up to there so let, let's just do that like none of this is optimal not, none of this is min maxi it's just agility is important and it, on your first playthrough you're gonna want some combat stuff now, primary skills, a good one to take is, of course, always long blade. Let's put long blade right in there. Uh, using a sword, always great. What else could we do? We could have maybe archery if you want to have a ranged weapon going. And besides that, hmm, what, what could we go for here? Like all of, some of these skills, 
less important than others. <laughs> you, you pick the ones that you know you're most likely gonna use. Um, you know, how about critical strike? You know, that, that, that could be handy when it comes to fighting. These are my primary skills. Then there's major skills. So let's throw in climbing. That's actually kind of a good one to have sometimes. We, we could do climbing. Cli climbing is a thing in this game. You basically just walk up a wall, which I will show you how to do. Um, what else could we do? Uh, we could do... Uh, running is good. Moving around is pretty good. And then we could do... How about uh, lock picking? Sure. Then we've got minor skills where, you know, let, let's have some alternate weapons here. Maybe like a blunt weapon. Uh, dodging might be kind of useful. Etiquette so we can talk to people a little bit nicer. <laughs> um, what else? Mercantile. That could be handy. Th these ones, you know, it's our first class. We don't know what's going to be good or bad. Maybe a touch of medical. And how about, um, see, I don't even, uh, how about, just in case we want to touch on it, we could do, where is it, where is it, um, restor restoration could be nice, uh, destruction, yeah, maybe some destruction magic at some point in the future. So we're just going to do that. None of it's optimal, by the way. Now, over here, there's special advantages and disadvantages. Let's have a look at those, what we can do. Acute hearing, adrenaline rush, athleticism, you know, all of these. Immunity to things. You know, doing, do, adding stuff like this, right, changes the skill advancement for class. So basically, it, you're, the more benefits you give to yourself, the harder it makes the game, basically. Um, we could do like regenerate health general, you know, and you see this dagger moved up, but we could add a special disadvantage to bring it back down. So for example, low tolerance to um, fire, and that brings it down a bit. Or we could do a critical weakness to shock, and that brings it way down. Maybe, maybe we might die if we do that. You can even do like forbidden armor types. We cannot wear leather, <laughs> you know, kind of strange. It's not... Not a huge thing. So if you know what you want to do, you can pick things. Forbidden weaponry. I never want to use a short blade. That sort of thing. Um, we could have an, another low... Uh, we could ha then have like a phobia of... Phobia of humanoids would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? You, you can make the game pretty uh, difficult. Um, how about forbidden shield types? We can't use a buckler. Or something. Uh, damage from sunlight. You can just give yourself that and ruin your experience. Forbidden material, right? We can't use elven stuff, you know, which apparently is a pretty big nerf. So, you know, you can do that to bring this down. So basically, the harder you make it for yourself, then you get a benefit for that, you know? Up to you. You can also see max hit points per level. We'll bring that up to like 11, so we're back to average. You know, you can change this, basically how many hit points you could potentially gain. Uh, this is classic Dungeons and Dragons RPG stuff. Everything is dice rolls. So let's, let's just do that. We're not too picky. Okay, so now there's another choice here. Uh, we can choose our character's career path by answering 12 important career decisions or just fast start by automatically doing things. Now, I would recommend you choose your career path here just for roleplay aspects. And also, there's some important things that will help you out here. So you're most fond of using, you know, Longblade. Let's focus on Longblade here. What motivates you in a life of adventures? Helping others. Which of the following skills have you been studying the longest? Um, how about critical striking? As a child, your nickname was... Scrapper. You were loaned and later allowed to keep. Now, some of these questions help you out right at the start. For this question, I'm just going to recommend you say a Dai Katana. <laughs> just for a start. Uh, what god, if any, if you worship? I don't know. Uh, you have the most trouble... Uh, resisting poisons. 
Since childhood, you have saved a favorite book. You are friendlier than most with... How about we make ourselves friendlier with dragons, if we eventually find one somewhere. Given 200 gold pieces as a reward, you decide to buy an ebony dagger. I'm just gonna recommend this one as well, you know, you buy an ebony dagger. You spend any free time you have training with longblades. You are intimate friends with a warrior. So we've actually got slightly higher reputation with commoners and scholars by doing that. These reputations help you through dialogue and, and access to things. Name thyself. I am, of course, Game Zack. Okay, we can choose a face here. I like the default. And now we can uh, we can roll to get a few more things here. So th this this is classic. D &D stuff. We can roll, max encumbrance, spell points, all of this you can roll, roll, roll. Um, generally, you you want higher numbers. Look at that. Strength 79, agility 85, endurance 61. You can save a roll and load a roll. You know, so like if you like this one, you can save and then roll. Oh, I don't like that. Load back to that one I liked. So you can save one roll. You can roll until you find something that's really good, like, oh, this this could be good. We can get that up to 80. We can get up that to 72. Agility, 84. That looks good. Endurance, agility, strength, high numbers. Damage plus three. This looks good. Okay. Then we got some skills to hand out. Let's just focus on long blade. Let's focus on... Uh, sure, running. I guess we'll run the most. And down here, let's boost up dodging. That makes sense, right? Okay. Player reflexes is how fast combat will go. If you're, it's your first time, pick average. Uh, you you do actually get benefits for making the game faster, or, and it, you know. But let's just leave it average. It's fine. And here's our character. This is who we are. Okay, good. And then it's gonna play some cinematics, which. I will skip for now. We don't oh, need to watch this. Years, you can watch it on your playthrough. There's the Imperial Perilous, where we speak to Uriel Septim. There he is. <laughs> it's fine. Let's get into the game. Let's get into the game. Ah, So we wake and look around, as is traditional in El Elder Scrolls games. Uh, there is a tutorial that you can follow, but... You can you should activate that on your side. You want to receive an early artifact quest as part of this. This is a quest pack. I'm just gonna say no, because I don't really know what that is. As in, if you're playing it the first time, it's fine. Here's our starting dungeon. Now, for this particular install of Daggerfall, I've also switched some hotkeys around. If you press escape and go to controls, you can see the hotkeys. I've swapped some around from what I think makes sense for a sort of modern gaming experience. So I'm going to press I to bring up our inventory. Here's us. Here's our stuff. Now, remember those questions we answered? Oh, look, I have a steel die katana and an ebony dagger. And remember, I said uh, certain enemies need certain materials. Anyway, to interact with this, you click on the action you want to do. Like info. This is a steel die katana. Let's equip the steel die katana. You know, we can also, we happen to have these leather greaves and this helmet. Let's equip that. We look a bit silly, but fine. Um, there's a spell book we have. Hmm. Uh, we've got some shoes. Great. Uh, there's the Wild Elves by Kiergo Chovak. Can I actually... Look, I actually have that book, remember? Now, we've equipped the Daikatana. If I press F, we bring it up. Now, I've set the combat to click. You right-click. And it attacks and it uses various attacks in the advanced options you can swap it to the classic attacking mode where you right click and hold and actually move the mouse to attack in certain directions it's cool but kind of weird if you like it go turn it on bottom left you can see health stamina magica good good now the rooms can be rather dark, right? If you press I to open your inventory, you'll see these torches and stuff. If you click on one, you light the torch. 
and then you have a light coming off of you. That can help out quite a bit. Now, let's go through the first dungeon. Now, I'm gonna go through a... Ooh, deep scratches cover the ground. Immersion text. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to get through this dungeon. Not the whole dungeon, which you might actually want to fully explore, but I'm gonna show you how to get through it. There's the first rat. Oh, look at that. One swing, we hit, we killed it. See? Character creation, very important. <laughs> There's some treasure right here. Let's grab that. Uh, gold pieces, steel dagger, iron war axe, lich dust nymph hair, Khajiit suit. <laughs> I've, I've actually never seen that here. The, the, the treasure's random, but sure, let's wear the Khajiit suit. Ah, then we go up these stairs. By the way, these torches, you can douse the torches. There's various interaction modes with one of the mods I picked here. If you press F1 to F4, F1 is in steel mode, grab mode, info mode, and dialogue mode. So in info mode, you see a torch. Dialogue mode, you can douse. In grab mode, you douse. In steel mode, you can just take the torch. Also, we've just been through a lot of effort in terms of creating a character. I actually risked facing that, that rat. We could have died. Let's press F9 to quick save the game. Good, good. F9 to quick save the game. <laughs> now, just to show why this torch I turned on was very important. If I douse the torch, things can be very dark. Very atmospheric, kind of like it. But can be rather hard to see things. Oh, there's a bat. Giant bat just died. Whew. See how much damage that did? Let's turn the torch back on. Now, in this first room, you don't have to open most of these rooms, but I'm going to show you this room here because let's go to weapons and armor and equip. Oh, right. I can't equip the iron dagger. Uh, let's equip the iron claymore. I've I've made myself unable to use um, uh, iron daggers. So this is an iron claymore. I'm going to open this door and there's going to be one of those guys in there. Now these guys can be pretty dangerous. Ooh. You see that? The material of the weapon you're using is ineffective. You can't use it. Straight up can't work. Now you could use... Uh, we have a ebony dagger. Wait. I prohibited myself from using daggers. So I picked the dial one of those questionnaires. I picked the ebony dagger, but I made myself unable to use daggers. Silly me. It happens in Daggerfall. Let's equip our steel Dai Katana. Now it takes a little bit of time to actually change hands, uh, change weapons and stuff. Oh. Imp just died. We got it. Now, through this first dungeon, at any really point in time, you might want to press R to rest and until fully healed. That's going to be the main way of healing in this this first dungeon. Now let's keep going. There's various doors which you could go through, but I'm showing you how to get through the first dungeon. I would actually recommend going down most of these doors because you want to practice your skills, you want to level up, you want to gain more loot. Giant bat just died. Okay. Now this door, end of the road. Let's open this up. Oh, there's a guy. Archer just died. Great. You've got some loot. Priest robes. Chain cuirass. Oh, you can actually equip straight from here, by the way. If you select equip, bam. Can I put the robes on top? I've got this left pauldron. Um, I think I'm wearing the robes on top of things. Yeah, that's... All right, I can't equip that. I'm on equip. Let's go back to our inventory. I've gone and messed things up. Let's go to equip. I want my steel die katana. Priest robes. So I'm wearing the priest robes on top of my stuff here. Sure. That's that's how we look. Looks good. So it's... Yeah, it replaced my shirt. Pants. Do I want the pants? No, I, I, like, the, I like the Khajiit thing coming through here. Yeah, that, that looks cool. I'm wearing the Khajiit suit. 
<laughs> okay. So I'm wearing the Khajiit suit with some armor pieces on top of that. And then on top of that, we are wearing chainmail and then putting a robe on top of the whole thing. <laughs> this feels warm. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to F9 right here to quick save, right? Now, there's two doors in this room. There's this door here and that door there. Now, that door goes sort of a long way. Oh, so good. Oh, so valid. This door is sort of a main door. And I'm going to show you something that might help, depending on your character build here. That could help quite a bit. I'm going to open this door. And this is a dangerous room. This is the first proper dangerous room. You see there's a bat there. But there's stairs. I'm going to show you. I'm going to run up the stairs. And you see, there's a skeleton right there. Now there's a bat and a skeleton. Now, enemies are not friends with each other. They fight each other. So while we lured the skeleton to fight the bat... Oh. It killed the bat real quick. Let's keep strafing. Keep stepping around. Can I do it? Got him. <sighs> that skeleton is the first real enemy. And he's got four gold pieces on him. But you can make the skeleton fight the bat. And you can get some free hits in. I'm going to step back this way. Back to here. Press R. Rest until fully healed. <laughs> That's not cheesy. This is a hard game. Use the advantages you have. Okay, so here we are. There's a door there. There's a door there. We can go up these stairs here. And there's so many ways to go. So many ways. There's that way. There's that way. I'm going to press F9 before something shows up and kills us. There's a throne right there. But I want to show you one thing. One little sidetracked thing here. I'm going to go up to here, I think it is. Got to kill this imp. Got him. Now, I want to show you this room because of how sometimes you got to figure out how to interact with things in this game. So you see this? Obviously suspicious. Look at this. This is the most suspicious bookshelves in all of gaming. And if you look through the gaps here and jump, ah, oh, there's something back there. How do you how do you get through there? Well, I'm going to show you this one secret here. There's a hidden button in this room. Let, let's just click on this. <gasps> There we go. <laughs> I want to show you this. You can grab that, grab that. Great. Okay. I just wanted to show you that room. Now, back to the throne room. Which is probably the most epic room in this dungeon. It looks great. Now, there's a couple ways... Oh, we can smell some blood, of course. It's probably our own. Um, there's a couple ways up here. There is a lever. And if you pull the lever... Well, if you're standing on this part, it would be useful. But if you pull the lever, you can ride the elevator up. Oh no, I forgot to get on the elevator. This does work both ways. So this is how you interact with the world in Daggerfall. But remember I told you about the climbing ability? If you want to climb a wall, you just walk up to a wall and keep pressing forward. Oh, you can't climb while holding your weapons. Put away your weapon. And keep walking up to the wall. And you just climb right up. Oh, oh, we're not the best climbers, but... You just... You just climb right up. You just walk up the wall and you climb. Um, and that, that gives you a lot of freedom, by the way. Climb onto the roofs of houses. Climb up walls of cities. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, but in dungeons, there could just be things where you gotta climb. So, pro tip there. Now, here we are. Lots of doors. But I'm showing you the way. Gotta kill this rat. You see me swinging and not hitting? Those are the dice rolls. We took a lot of damage there. I'm gonna step back. See if we can rest. 
Okay. Imp just died. Remember, the enemies fight each other. They're not friends. So we're going here, and then there's this first door here, which I think is where we're going. Oh, there's a rat. Come on, rat. What's going- Oh, <laughs> there it is. Rat just died. Giant bat just died. So the rat and bat killed the imp, I think, in this room, because that's an imp. Skull right there. We can hear enemies around, but it's fine. And this is the way out. Oh, I think it's nighttime. I think the door graphic actually changes based on what time of day it is. But let's click this door. And we've made it out of the first dungeon. That's the first dungeon. Look at that. Isn't that cool? We're loading up into the world right now. Here we are. It's snowing. It's nighttime. It's loading in. There's a bird right there. What's that glowing thing? Hmm, who knows? Now, we're right here. Look at that. They actually put like little bat eyes on that entrance right there. This is this is what a lot of dungeons look like. Well, we're outside of the dungeon now. Uh, let's douse our torch. Good. Now, that we're out into the overworld, let's press V. This is the world we're playing in. This is the Iliac Bay. And here's Daggerfall. Here's Daggerfall. So, this is where we are. If you press I'm at, it's going to show you where, you're, where you are. These are regions. Now, these are not locations. If I click on Daggerfall, that's Daggerfall. That's how many places there are in Daggerfall. And I'm not even sure if all of them are marked right from the start. These are dungeons. Let's actually turn these off. These are dungeons. These are temples. These are homes. And these are towns. That is a lot of stuff. <laughs> so... This is the region of Daggerfall. I want to go to the city of Daggerfall. Huh. I better press this find button. Let's look for Daggerfall. You don't actually have to type the whole name. If you know, if you just type dagger, it's going to show you some options, right? Or you could type in a specific name. And if you get it exactly right, or well, if there's only one option based on what you typed in, let's say, there it is. That's Daggerfall. Do you wish to travel to Daggerfall? Not yet. I just want to show you something. So we're there right now. So if I look at dungeons, that's where we are. Privateers hold. Right? That's the one. That's where we are. So the nearest thing to us is a town directly south called Gothway Garden. So it's so close together on the map that the dots are actually overlapping, right? That's Privateer's Hold. That's Gothway Garden. So that's how far I'm going to run. And I want to show you this distance. It's directly south. So, bottom right corner. Directly south, that way. And I'm gonna run. Now we can see how long it takes for us to go that distance, where on the map, the dots are literally overlapping. Directly south, right? The town's right here. And not there yet. We're still going. <laughs> I just want to ex explain just to make sure you guys can see where we're going. I'm going to bring out the torch. There we go. It is nighttime. Might as well light the torch. The torches do run out, by the way. We're going directly south. I'm holding down shift to run. It's... it's can't quite see it yet. 
Oh, I think I see some lights. Just past those trees there. I, th I think we... S yeah, th there's some lights right there. Oh, we're loading into a new chunk there. Just give it a second. There we go. That That's the town. That's Gothway Garden right there. We're not quite there yet. We're still running. Okay, almost there. Almost to Gothway Garden. We can at least see the buildings now. There, there, there's the town. You are now entering Goth Gothway Garden. We've reached the town. Here we are. So, you can check the time on this video, how long it took us to run here from Privateer's Hold, directly north of here. If you look at the map, where we are, look, we just ran from there to there. <laughs> we ran from there to there. That's how long it took. Literally the nearest two places are in this game. You see, almost none of the other dots are even touching, let alone overlapping. These two dots are actually overlapping. And that's how long it took. And this is the region of Daggerfall. And this is the game world we're playing in. It's big. It's big, it's big, it's big, it's big. Anyway, let's find Daggerfall. There it is, the city of Daggerfall. I want to travel to Daggerfall. This is why we use fast travel. We have 80 gold. It'll cost 40 if we stay at inns. Nah, let's just camp out. It's gonna take more time. Now, foot or horse doesn't matter too much. Cautiously or recklessly. If you do recklessly, we could get there a bit faster, but we're not pressed for time right now. So let's do cautiously, but camping out, right? Safe, but cheap. Begin. And we travel to the city of Daggerfall. Use the fast travel system. The whole of the Iliac Bay is open right from the start. It's just about time or money. Ah, we've leveled up some stuff. Good. We're loading into the world here. Okay. And here is Daggerfall. This is the city of Daggerfall. If you press M, you can bring up the local map. And if you want to know what these places are, the colored buildings are the ones which are basically useful. <laughs> the rest are residences or gardens and stuff like that. Um, you can go into them or ask people about them. There's a little cat to greet you right here by the, the main entrance of Daggerfall. Hello. <laughs> That's the very important mod that I insisted on putting in. Talking to people. Hello. Wait, I need to go into dialogue mode. Oh no. This is Daggerfall. I think I was on steel. I was on steel mode. And I just accidentally tried to pickpocket someone. Be careful what mode you're in. This is Daggerfall. I'm going to surrender to the city guards. Um, 40 gold pieces and 12 days in prison. All right. I'm guilty. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's an old school game. A misclick is, is going to ruin you. But some time has passed. A letter is pressed into your hand. You spin to see who gave it to you. You catch a glimpse of livery that vanishes into the crowd. Okay, so I was on... Oh, a thief just died. I think the guards just killed a thief. You saw that? So I was on steel mode. And I think, yeah, let's go to dialogue mode. Now, a letter was pressed into our hands. Letters, yours sincerely. So if you go to info and click on the letter, no, equip, no, use the letter, we actually get a whole message. And then it sort of tells you what you can and can't do and blah, blah, blah. You know, where to go, stuff like that. Uh huh. Also, the book we started with, you can't actually read it. Look at that. The Wild Elves. So. There's also, just to know, just to let you know, L shows you active quests, right? 
J shows your current status. In the eyes of the law of Daggerfall, you are undependable. I'm healthy though. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically it. Now, I wanted to show you dialogue mode. Let's try talk to someone. Yes. You can tell me about where am I? I'm in Daggerfall. You can act polite. Um, Lady Brissina. Indeed, I was hoping you might know about Lady Brissina. Or you could ask it normally. Really, you must know something about Lady Brissina. Or you could be blunt. So, I'm looking for a tip on Lady Brissina. Now, how you talk to people can affect how they respond. Sometimes you gotta spam the question. Uh, but you can ask where is things. So let's say you're looking for taverns, you can just ask about taverns. Goodbye. And if we look at the map, you might have... Yeah, look at that. We've, we've named some taverns just by asking about it. Didn't tell us about everything, but he knows where, where these four taverns are. So you can get things labeled like that a little bit quicker by asking people where where things are. Okay. And besides that, I think you'll be good to go. Right? You could go on a killing spree. Have the guards chase you. <laughs> you do outrun them a little bit. And you can have them tell you to halt. Anyway, that is an introduction to Daggerfall. I uh, hope you have a lot of fun with it. There's a so much improved from Vanilla Daggerfall. I think it's pretty much agreed upon that there's no reason to play original DOS Daggerfall. Daggerfall Unity, an amazing creation. And now with all the mods and the way it's set up here, it's just a click install. Have fun. Have at it. <laughs> all right, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed this look at Daggerfall Unity with all the mods and go have fun with it. Bye guys. Bye!